So skill-based matchmaking has been a big topic of discussion for a while now, naturally. But as of late, I feel like it's picked up quite a bit. From the alpha of Cold War onwards, I feel like it's ramped up like tenfold. But as of recently, we finally started to get some transparency through some API and stat tracking within Call of Duty. That is until Activision changed it for what I think the worst, not for the better. So I'm going to run down with you the odd case that is blocking public stats, what it means and where we go from here. As we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of this? Do you think it was the right move, not the right move? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know. As well, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're on that road to 400,000 subscribers and we'll keep you the day with all things Cold War, Warzone and anything COD related. So if you're interested in joining the community, I'd love to have you. But said, let's talk about the issue at hand. So let's start at the beginning, where this comes from. The topic of skill-based matchmaking and reverse boosting had been a renowned issue in the communal discussion as of lately when a few high-level streamers came out and said that they knew some people were doing some shady stuff stuff that even carried over into tournaments. If it was for like YouTube content personally, I don't care. And that's entirely cool if you think differently. Sometimes it can take four, five, six, seven, eight hours worth of content to make one YouTube video, sometimes even longer if the matches are just obscene. So in that perspective, I don't really agree with it, but I understand where that would be something used to shave off some time while working. But where it comes down to be a rather concerning issue is when these tournaments are shelling out hundreds of thousands in prize money, and you have somebody who's exploiting a matchmaking system to get easier lobbies. To me, that's why even though I love Battle Royale a ton have since the very beginnings back in the Arma mod days and Minecraft Hunger Game days, I've never considered BR to be fundamentally competitive. The game just varies every single match too much on such wild levels. Sure, one can argue maybe the ability to overcome any specific in-game adversity makes one a skilled player, but when you have identical players of the same skill and it comes down to one just finds a pistol, the other finds a Mac-10, it's a clear disadvantage. But that's beside the point. The point being the competition could be skewed and people could lose out on literally thousands of dollars, sometimes incredibly life-changing money. I mean, some of these tournaments drop $100,000 to the trios who come in first, and I'm sure that we'd all be cool with a whopping $30,000 split for a day or two's work. But these statements from streamers about shady dealings amplified it, and as of recently, the community was abuzz when fellow creator Drifter put out a video saying that he pinpointed exactly how this was done. No third-party stuff needed, no NetDuma routers to geolock, no VPN to do the same, no joining a dummy account that had worse stats than yours so you could get easier lobbies. Nothing. It was a way that simply allowed you to get matches with players that you had no business being in games with. Ones that if you could stand in front of them, they wouldn't really know to shoot you back. They may think you're on their team. That's when stat tracking became a huge topic of discussion as a new site called SBMM Warzone came on the block, offering up full lobby tracking with easy to manage stats right there for all to see and a grading system that admittedly could have used some work. The difference between a silver and a diamond lobby was relatively slim compared to what people would maybe consider when thinking about such gradings, but you could see how you stacked up against everyone in that lobby and see how the lobby itself stacked up against the global player base. It was really fascinating stuff, truth be told, to be able to track these in-depth intricacies of your game and the players you are playing against in almost real time. But this sent the rabbit hole even deeper. People were then starting to accuse anyone and everyone of reverse boosting or lobby exploiting. If they saw you were a high-level player and got into a singular bronze match or a silver match, sometimes they were right, a lot of the times they were not. Matchmaking in Warzone is based upon performance and player retention, so an easy-to-miss logical explanation why it have that random dip down to a silver lobby perhaps was that if you're a high level player you often drop hot with lots of action right off the rip so if you get one two kills and then die they play slow and don't have a lot to show for it in that match then requeue after a few games of that happening the algorithm sees oh they're placing pretty poorly they're not doing too well let's adjust the queue logic but anyways side tangent again aside as of thursday evening activision actually changed the api for call of duty statistics meaning that everyone's data was automatically set to private meaning that everyone's Activision ID actually ended up getting a new setting in their account settings in which it gave the ability to share data to friends, everyone, or not at all. And it was defaulted to no one being able to see that. So for probably about 90% of the player base that don't necessarily care too much about this, that don't follow Call of Duty on, say, social media sites like YouTube, like Twitter, and the like, this stuff 
probably will go right over their heads. This will never be an issue for them. They don't care that their stats were being shared with these websites or that they're now private. So it kind of cripples these stat tracking sites and what we've seen as of recently, giving us a little bit more transparency as to how matchmaking works, how these things actually come about. For a little bit, this actually made the ability to track stats impossible. Again, if you do end up choosing to share your information with friends or all, it can allow the API to update on these websites so you can see your lobbies and your stats specifically. And I think even SBMM Warzone now shows what percentage of the lobby has that shared. So therefore you get a basic framework of what you're going up against, but it might not be entirely accurate. Now, to me, I just don't quite understand the logic behind doing this. I can't see this being the most pressing issue that Call of Duty has. This whole entire timeline we just talked about was a week, maybe two weeks tops here, in which this was a relatively quick turnaround to completely negate any tracking that you had or attempt to negate any tracking that you had in relation to matchmaking. Instead of anything that we've ever seen publicly mentioned that skill-based matchmaking is a thing, which by the way, we still haven't heard anything in relation from official capacities that skill-based matchmaking matchmaking does exist. It's been proven time and time again, but we've still never had any official word on it. Instead of having anything like that, Activision seems to be attempting to cover up anything that allows players to see that proof for themselves. And just fundamentally, that's what I don't understand. To be able to see statistics of other players is more of a pressing issue that you need to cover up in a more timely manner than the 10 months of cheating we've had in a free-to-play game where players can just create a new account. That is something that I just don't understand. And I don't think that I will understand unless we get an explanation, which we're likely not going to. Now, I have heard some decent ideas as for rebuttals, why this may be a thing. Maybe it's a privacy and legal thing where that data could be air quotes seen as being sold off to third parties. And I understand that. I don't think that that really has any legal standing from that perspective. It has absolutely no personal value here with it. It just simply is your statistics in game, which in the real world is entirely arbitrary, has absolutely no point. Maybe it is something that has caused some concern with investors where they see it's possible to cheat and it questions the integrity of their investments. I don't exactly know, but the implications of this go further than just tournaments. I mean, this was a way that you could track to see if there was a cheater in your match. If you saw somebody with a 15 KD, I'm gonna be real with you, dude. He doesn't just have a better gaming chair than you. That dude can use Code Espresso on all his G Fuel products and have three cups a day, but he's not gonna be maintaining a 15 KD like that if he's legitimate. So to me, it's just a little underhanded that we finally have some sort of transparency here at this, finding our own answers where Activision won't give us any in relation to skill-based matchmaking, to the matchmaking system, and to those that may be able to exploit it. And instead, we now have just this cover-up where the routes we were taking for answers have been cut off. So. That's where I'm at here with this. I just wanted to have a little bit of a discussion here with you. I don't think this is good for the overall future of Call of Duty. I'd love to see some transparency finally with this kind of stuff, but I don't think we're going to see that happen. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Kind of just have a communal discussion here with this. It was something that I mentioned over on Twitter, but didn't really get to air as much backstory and my thoughts as 240 characters or whatever Twitter lets you have now. It wasn't enough room to have an actual proper discussion about this. So want to get your thoughts and feedback down below. Let me know your thoughts. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and want to stay up to date with all things Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and anything COD related. We'll keep you to date with all of it, so if you're interested, hit that subscribe button. And also, if you want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, there's the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Probably live on both those. So if you guys want to check up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.